This tutorial sheet is a brief tutorial sheet looking at Laplace transforms. What we're going to do then is give a number of tutorial and exam style questions so that students can practice. Now the key point about these videos is students should pause the video and attempt the questions before they look at the solutions provided. You should also remember that the solutions provided or the approaches are exemplar. There are other ways of doing it which may be equally correct. Before we start then, just a reminder of the table of Laplace transforms. Generally speaking, the way people do Laplace is they refer back to the table. So given a particular function of time, they will just go to the table and say what's the corresponding Laplace transform. And that's what we would expect you to do. Here's the question then. You'll notice that we've listed a number of signals, f of t, g of t, h of t, m of t, n of t. Now I'm not going to read these out, you can read them yourself. The idea is that at this point you pause the video. Try and do the Laplace transforms of these signals by yourself. Okay, I am now going to continue to the answer, so please press pause before you continue. Here are the first two then. So f of t equals 5e to the minus 2t. Now this one comes straight from the table where you'll see that Laplace of e to the minus at equals 1 over s plus a. And therefore Laplace of e to the minus 2t is 1 over s plus 2. Or finally Laplace of 5e to the minus 2t is going to be 5 over s plus 2. So you'll notice how I've used the table and very quickly got the answer that I need. What about the next one? Well, for this one, you remember that Laplace of a constant is 1 over s and Laplace of cos omega t equals s over s squared plus omega squared. So if I use those two results together, then Laplace of g is going to have to be 3 over s, because I had 3 rather than 1, and then I'm going to get plus s over s squared plus 2 squared, because in this particular case the omega is 2. Next question. We've got h equals t e to the minus 3t. Now you'll notice from the table that we have a rule that says Laplace of t times f is minus dds times Laplace of f. So that's the rule we want to look at because we've got t times another function. So first of all I can do Laplace of e to the minus 3t equals 1 over s plus 3. And therefore, Laplace of t e to the minus 3t equals minus dds of 1 over s plus 3, which gives me 1 over s plus 3 squared. So again, you'll notice we've gone straight from the table, and in this particular case, we've used a particular rule that is in the table. What about the next example then, m? Now you'll notice that in the table we have Laplace of e to the minus at sine omega t gives you omega over s plus a squared plus omega squared. So that's what the table gives us. And now all I need to do is recognize that in this case a is 4 and omega is 3. So Laplace of e to the minus 4t sine of 3t has got to be equal to 3 over s plus 4 squared plus 3 squared. Now you might want to expand that out. Often it's best to leave it in that form because it tells you that it comes from an exponential times a sine. But just in case you wanted to, you'd see this gives you 3 over s squared plus 8s plus 25. 
Next example, n of t equals e to the minus t times 2 plus cos 2t plus pi by 4. Now this one looks a bit more challenging, but actually it's not really. But what you'll notice is this cos term with the cos 2t plus pi by 4 does not appear in the table. So what I'm going to do is first expand this out in order to put it in a form that appears in the table, which is just normal cosines and sines. So using the double angle formula from cosine and sine, cos 2t plus pi by 4 is the same as cos 2t cos pi by 4 minus sine 2t sine pi by 4, which gives you 1 over root 2 into cos 2t minus sine 2t. Now having done that, you'll notice I can put this expression here, just circle it, up here. And therefore the problem becomes a lot easier. So now I've got Laplace of 2 e to the minus t. That bit's easy. That's going to be 2 over s plus 1. And then I've got Laplace of e to the minus t into 1 over root 2 cos 2t minus sine 2t. And again, as on the previous slide, I'm just going to look in the table and I'll see that I've got a Laplace for e to the minus t cos 2t and a Laplace for e to the minus t sine 2t. So if I do that, and I use an arrow to go down here, I'm going to get 1 over root 2. I'll take that outside to keep life easy. For the cosine term, I'm going to get s plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 2 squared. And for the sine term, which is minus, I'm going to get a 2 over s plus 1 squared plus 2 squared. And clearly, to get the final result, I just add those two terms together. Now, we've said this before, but it's quite useful if you use MATLAB to check your work, because that allows you to be independent. It means that you can also create questions of your own and test your understanding. So that's what we're going to do now. We'll just move to the MATLAB window. We can find it. There it is. And I'll just clear that so we can see one step at a time. So here's an example of how we can look at these particular problems. First, create a symbolic variable t. There we go. Now I'm going to enter the function f. There you can see f equals 5 e to the minus 2t. And then I can use this Laplace function, Laplace f. And what do you notice? 5 over s plus 2. Is that the answer you got when you tried it on pen and paper? If you've got the same answer as you get from MATLAB, you're pretty confident you're doing both correct. The next one, g. g was 3 plus cos 2t. There it is. What's Laplace of g? And there you can see s over s squared plus 4 plus 3 over s. What about h? That was t e to the minus 3t. We can now do Laplace of h. There it is. And what do we get? 1 over s plus 3 squared, as expected. What about m? That was e to the minus 4t times sine 3t. There it is. Take Laplace of m. And what do you get? 3 over s plus 4 all squared plus 9, exactly as we derived. And the final one, which is a bit messier, but there it is, n equals e to the minus t times 2 plus cos 2t plus pi by 4. You can enter that. MATLAB's quite happy. Take the Laplace transform of that. And what do you get? It's stretched across the screen a bit, but you'll notice over here where I've got my 2 over s plus 1. That goes from the 2 bit in the brackets, and then you'll see I've got this 2 to the half, which is the root 2 type of term you expected, and these minus is deal with the other bits I had. I'm not going to expand it in detail. Uh, you can do that, and you'll see it's the same answer that we got on pen and paper. So in conclusions, we've given a short tutorial on Laplace transforms and demonstrated the working required to solve these problems. We've also shown that you can use MATLAB to check your work. Just as a sort of a minor point, there's not much point in doing oops, what's happened there, really complicated questions, because if you do really complicated questions, you might as well go to software anyway. And a challenge for you is create 
your own functions of time. Write them down, try and find the Laplace transforms, and then use MATLAB to check your work. And this makes you independent. And that's a key thing, key learning skill you need in the long term. And just as a by the by, textbooks, of course, have lots of other examples if you need them.